All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining in. Enjoy your lunch. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, testing time in Java. Uh, I'm Joop Weijers. I uh, work as a build master at Topdesk. And uh, at Topdesk, we, have a, uh, we create our own uh, service management software. And uh, we want to deliver uh, quality releases continuously. So in my role as build master, uh, I also educate developers uh, on testable code. Uh, this presentation is going to consist of three parts. First, I'll introduce the example application uh, that I use to explain uh, testing time in Java. Uh, the second part will be how to unit test this application. And the third part, I'll look into end-to-end -end testing this application. So I created a uh, simple, small, time-dependent application. And uh, it's a login system. Really simple, not very secure. But I did include uh, one of the OWASP uh, recommendations, uh, namely the, uh, locking out a user so his password can be brute forced after too many incorrect uh, logins. So uh, the way I implemented this uh, is if you uh, enter the incorrect credentials three times, then your account gets locked for five minutes, so you can't log in, not even with the correct credentials. Um, now, the method that, is, uh, that I use for this is called five minutes ago to determine if uh, five minutes have passed. And this is also the, uh, the method that I'll look into for the unit tests. So, how are we going to unit test this method? method? Um, well, we can write a naive test. Just take the current time, subtract uh, yeah, five minutes, and call our method. And that should be the same, right? Well. Uh, I have two problems with it, this test. Uh, one is that it's not a unit test. It's depending on the underlying system, uh, because it calls system current time milis. Uh, so by definition, it's not a unit test. And the second uh, problem is that this is a flaky test. Um, there might be one or more milliseconds difference between the evaluation of the expected and the actual result. So then this test would fail once in a while. So isn't that really the way to do it. And uh, well, as any self-respecting developer, I uh, type into Google how to test system current time release. I end up on Stack Overflow. And the answer is, don't use it. Use your own implementation of system current time release so that you can, uh, in your test, you can change the implementation. implementation and then, uh, yeah, it will be, uh, you can test it. Uh, since Java 8, uh, Java has some uh, convenience for this. It's called the Java Time Clock. It's a yeah, implementation of a clock. You can ask it for the current time release. And uh, well, if you pass it around through your code, either through dependency injection or you get it as a parameter in your uh, time-dependent code, um, then you can use any in your test. You can use any of the uh, specific implementations for tests, like fixed clock or uh, yeah, a uh, slow clock. Um, so how would the, the, the method look like if we use this, this clock uh, idea? Uh, well, we get a clock as a parameter. Uh, we ask it for the uh, current milis since uh, the epoch, and then subtract the time. Uh, the unit test will then uh, look like this. We pick a specific point in time, and then we make a fixed clock. So uh, it's not running. It always returns that same time. And then we do our uh, assertion. So now we solve both the problems. Uh, we're no longer dependent on system current time release. And uh, the clock always returns the same value, so there won't be any difference between the expected and the actual result. Um, well, this has some downsides. Uh, the obvious one is that you have to change your code to pass that clock everywhere, or dependency injected. Um, and that is really a problem if you have code that's not under your control. Uh, some examples uh, is the Java util date constructor. It uses system current time release internally. So you, yeah, if you use date, you can't override it. Uh, another example, uh, Google Guava's cache. That might be a, uh, uh, yeah, an option to implement the uh, login attempts uh, with. Uh, that uses nano time internally, so also not the uh, clock. So um, and another problem that we at Topdesk ran into 
is um, we have a very big legacy application that we still have to maintain. And we want to test it, but it's really infeasible to introduce, uh, to change system current timelines everywhere and all the dependencies. So we had to come up with our own solution, and we call it the time transformer. The time transformer is a little uh, Java agent that overrides all the calls to system current time milis and system dot nano time. And you can tell the time transformer to use your own implementation of time. Obviously, the default implementation of time is just use current system time milis and current uh, uh, system dot nano time. Um, but in your test, you can use a transforming time. It's an uh, interface we, uh, we add in. And, um, well, let's see how we write a unit test using the time transformer. So first, we make sure that the uh, time is the transforming time. And next, we pick a same point in time, and then we use a, a fluent API on the ti uh, transforming time to change the time to our uh, specific point in time, and then we stop the clock. Uh, and then afterwards, we have the same assertion again. So there's one caveat here. Uh, unit tests should be isolated, so you should clean up after yourself by restoring the original time or your next test will go uh, haywire. Um, so this is a little example of uh, how to uh, unit test uh, such an application, this method. Uh, now I'm going to look at the end-to-end uh, -end tests. So uh, the simplest uh, way is to do a manual test. And that might be an option uh, if you release once a year, have one big uh, regression test, then yeah, waiting for five minutes to uh, make sure that the time has elapsed. That's fine. Um, won't work for uh, longer intervals if you have to wait hours or days. Uh, then it's not really useful. You can speed up the uh, change the time of your PC to make the application think uh, stuff is uh, going faster. But this has some nasty side effects, like Outlook will go haywire, your login sessions will expire. So it's not really the best way. And in addition, uh, as I told at Topdesk, we like to uh, deliver quality code continuously. So we're not going to do manual testing. So I'll grab my Selenium, and uh, we'll write an end-to-end -end test uh, using the given, then, uh, given when then format. So given that the user is, uh, uh, we start the application, we make sure the user is logged out by uh, logging in three times with the incorrect credentials. And then when the five minutes have expired and the user log uses the correct login, then he should be successfully logged in. So uh, yeah, for this uh, presentation, we're obviously interested in the when user logout time has expired. Um, and we can do a, a naive implementation, just uh, sleep five minutes. Uh, and this might be a, a, a valid option if you, say, uh, run your end-to-end -end tests uh, once per day during the night, if you don't care uh, how long the tests take, as long as they're done in the morning, then fine, this will work. But, uh, yeah, we want to deliver quality software continuously, so that means we want to run all our end-to-end -end tests all the time. So our solution for this end-to-end -end test is also use the time transformer. So, um, yeah, uh, this is a, a black box end-to-end -end test. Uh, we start up the server in a separate process, and we just only use its, uh, uh, yeah, we use a web browser to test it. We use its HTTP APIs. So we need a way to communicate to our server to tell it to change the time. Um, in this case, well, the, the, the system under test it's a web server, so uh, how do we change state in web servers? We write an HTTP endpoint. So that's what I also did in this, uh, in this test uh, example application. And now I changed the implementation of the uh, user lockout time to call this test slash transform time endpoint to tell the server to change the time. Um, so when this is executed, the server will think it's five minutes later. The uh, endpoint in the server uh, looks a bit like this. Just parse the time from the parameters, make sure the time is the transforming time, and then we uh, apply our uh, change. Um, 
don't put this kind of code in production. Make sure it's always behind a testing flag or somehow, because uh, you don't want to have this on your production system. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, will the time transformer uh, solve all your timing problems? Well, for us so far, they have. But there are some downsides. So um, one of the downsides is that it's a Java agent. and uh, you need to pass Java agents uh, as JVM parameters when you start up your application or your unit tests. So there is some Maven magic required, so, uh, if you use Maven, uh, to get it to work. Um, and the, the biggest problem I have with the time transformer is that uh, the best way to do this kind of stuff, test time, is the second example that I showed in the unit test, pass that Java time clock. Um, it is, wasn't feasible for us, so we created this time transformer basically as a last resort to test code that was not set up for testability. So, um, should you have a legacy application or a valid use case for this time transformer, uh, can I use it? And yes, you can. Uh, we have uh, just open sourced it, so uh, everyone can uh, play around with that. If you have uh, any questions about it, uh, feel free to grab me in, in person or uh, to uh, ask uh, via Twitter. Uh, and I would also like to recommend our uh, technical blog from uh, Topdesk. Uh, well, if you like this kind of technical talk, which you obviously do, else you wouldn't be here at DevOx. Uh, we have some more here, so uh, feel free to have a look around there. Thank you.